a BS or Helen. Hey, what's going on everybody? Comedy and trucks here. Super Trucker Tim. You know, I hate that slogan that says, uh, keep Portland weird. It's like they're trying to hog all the attention, you know, because I've trucked the entire state. The whole state of Oregon is weird, guys. You know, I'm from Medford, which is a little off the beaten path, and it's got more weirdness than just about anywhere I've been in Oregon <clears throat> and for anywhere for that part and uh I just remember years ago long time ago when I was a young man uh if I saw a beautiful girl and she asked me to go somewhere with her I'd follow her off a cliff like a lemming blow right past a guy handing out free parachutes it's pretty dumb my wife says I'm I haven't really gotten any smarter so I don't know about that, but I just remember years ago, back in the day, there was this beautiful girl, you know, and she asked me out, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool, uh, where are we going, Denny's, IHOP, doing a little putt-putt, what are we doing, splurging for Sizzler, something fancy, no, she asked me to, to church, I uh, wasn't big on that idea, but Cute girl asked me to go somewhere. I went with her. She takes me out to this remote church in the middle of nowhere, Butte Falls, Oregon. Population, a thousand teeth, maybe twenty. <laughs> you know, not not good, not a good place, man. Reese Creek Christian Fellowship was the name of it. And we go in there, and I'm I'm on cloud nine. I'm not really paying attention to what's going on until I. I got slapped in the head by reality, you know, in the form of a 44 year old redheaded woman, uh, named Helen. Wow. She slaps me in the head. All of a sudden I start noticing what's going on. <clears throat> you know, she's putting her hand on people's heads. They're falling out. <clears throat> bam, done. Bam, done. Bam, done. Next, next, next. And she claims to be able to pass people out with the Holy Spirit. But I wasn't going down. So it only made sense that she made the claim, this man has a demon. I didn't really care for that. But every time I looked at this, this girl, you know, the thoughts that came in my head, she might not be completely wrong. <laughs> but uh, it was natural, guys, you know, to, to chase a girl like that. But uh, she made a claim, and not only did she do that, but uh, the only thing that she had that was going to knock me out was her breath. Her breath was so bad, her breath was so bad that it smelt like she ate a Dookie Burt sandwich, washed it down with a, a gallon of Whiz, and then made out with the Crypt Keeper. It was that bad. That was the only thing about her that could have knocked me over. But she uh, she ended up getting pretty upset at me because I wouldn't play along. And it didn't take me long to figure out that Helen was a charlatan. So I asked her to lower the mic a little bit and I whispered in her ear and I said, I said, hey, Helen, you know what? I can't be sold, but I can be bought. Okay, so here's the deal. You slide me a Hyundai, I'll do a barrel roll, a couple flips, right? 200 I'll flop around like a landed bass on on shore 
You give me 500, I'll give you the showstopper. Oh man, they'll be talking about this for months and your tip jar is going to be overflowing. But Helen was the worst kind of charlatan, a cheapskate charlatan. So this is what she decided to do. I'm not going to pay you. She, uh, she puts her arm around me and tries to clown me on in front of everybody on stage. And she says, I'm going to give you my testimony, Tim. See, I had too much to drink one night before I was saved. I crashed in an oak tree and died. Went to hell and the Lord walked me around hell and said, Helen, you go back up there and tell everybody about this horrible place so you won't want to go there. And then she asked me, now not paying me was her first mistake. Asking me what I thought about her testimony, second mistake. So I looked at her and I said into the microphone, Helen, let's, let's be clear here. Everybody's admitting their guilt and their sins, right? Jose Cuervo wasn't the only thing you were doing that night, was it? Hitting the shrooms, dropping a little acid. On top of that, a concussion from an oak tree, one of the hardest woods in the Pacific Northwest, right? You hit it. And then who knows what kind of painkillers or meds they put you on in the ambulance. You're going to be seeing things. Well, Helen had a card to play that I completely underestimated. <clears throat> Her control over uh, indoctrinated mindless drones. They all rose up like one person and came at me. And that's the second fastest I ever ran in my life. The cute girl was holding the door open, motioned me, run! So I ran, guys. <laughs> I ran fast. Now that's the second fastest I ever ran. First fastest I ever ran was from religious people too. But when I was a young man, also even younger than, than this first occurrence, my grandfather told me, don't ever go in the woods above our farm here. Stay out of there. You know, and he, he was telling me there's weird people who live up there. And, and I'm just laughing. You know, I went up there at one point and I saw these wicker man kind of figures tied up in the trees and like just weird weird things you know holes that go straight down with like wood holder a holder for a, for like a cauldron over the top of it just weird looking stuff right but i thought it was just hillbillies trying to protect their hunting spots trying to intimidate people my mistake so you guys ever heard stories that hikers say around this area about uh weird people in mass falling around in the woods all the way from southern oregon to lassen Let's just cut to the chase. It's real. <laughs> it's all real. You know, there was an abandoned old uh, rock quarry up there where I'm talking about. And I got this bright idea. Hey, let's fill it full of pallets. And then at the end of the year, when it's a little safer, let's do a bonfire, right? So me and my buddy Roy go up there after truckload after truckload of, after truckload of pallets. Let's light this bad boy up, right? We were big in the fire back in those days. Lit it up, boom. Awesome, you know, one of the best bonfires, no, the best bonfire we've ever done. Lit it up. <clears throat> Apparently the smoke from the bonfire smoked out some, I, I don't wanna say Satanist cause I don't know what these guys worshiped, smoked them out. So we hear this drum beat, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom, or this weird drum beat. And all of a sudden, we've got like 30 plus people coming at us in a horseshoe formation, coming down at us, right? Now, guys, when you've got around 30 plus people floating after you, no, nobody has a flashlight, nobody's saying a word to each other, and they're in perfect unison, communicating well, chasing, and it's a good thing they didn't play football. They didn't have a football team because they didn't need to communicate to know what their next blitz was going to be. Perfect unison floating up after us down, down the hill as we're running our butts off. It just seemed like a bad time to ask them about their religion. And I had lots of questions. It seemed like an inconvenient time. And I get it. Maybe their kids were acting up that day, the ones they didn't sacrifice. You know, everybody has off days. And it, plus, it seemed like their motives were a little darker than the crazy holy rollers that I was talking about earlier. So I didn't really want to stop. But I did want to say, hey, that uh, 
that altar you guys had that was covered in blood, I did not see one uh, hazmat blood spill kit. And you can't tell me the blood you were drinking was homogenized. Very unsafe, people. Safety is obviously not your first concern. So I just yelled back and said, hey, guys, why don't you email me? I'll come back at a more convenient time. Uh, just, just address the email from the Dark Lord so I don't spam it. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like getting chased by, uh, if you guys have seen that movie, The Strangers, where there was three people with masks that terrorized and killed a couple. Well, imagine getting chased by 30 of those people. It was, it was a lot like that. Hey, Salem. You know what? I just wanted to say that uh, I really appreciate how civilized you guys are. And, you know, that might not sound like much to you, but it's a lot to me because I'm from Medford. And if you're from there, you appreciate sanity and uh, not having to worry about going into the woods and worry about coming out if you're going to come out or not. So I appreciate that. I just want to say thanks.